Okay. Yeah. Take it away, Appreciate Jeff. It. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you to everyone for uh, jumping into this lunch and learn. A few of us have been off to the side, kind of working on some sprints uh, with, with, with David and Allison and a couple other team members uh, around what this very confusing title says, Dust, Disty Subbrand, which I'm keeping here really just to spoil the, uh, hold on to the reveal of the name that we've come up with for this stuff. Um, and so really right off the bat, let's just level set on why we're here at all. Uh, we want to answer the question, why do anything? Like what is a DISTI subbrand? What are we doing with that concept and in that work? Uh, and so this presentation is really a summary of some of the things that we've been doing and, uh, and the motivations for those things and where we're taking them. So this should look familiar to uh, all of you. Uh, this one page plan. And what we can see here is kind of also an example of how Loop makes money, right? We've got uh, this, the revolution is obviously driving everything, but uh, Loop has the practice, which is at the center of pretty much everything that you're doing with all of these uh, inclusions, uh, wizardry, creativity, the workshop. Uh, and so, but the way you make money is through these arms of business, these business model uh, systems. And so we have a distribution, um, systems integration, OEM, IP, and dev tools. And uh, when we first started working together, a lot of our effort was to kind of get really clear and focused on the top half of this uh, graphic. And what we've been pushing into lately is how do we create opportunity and awareness and ease uh, for customers to engage in these different business model lines. Uh, and so right off the bat, we've already been doing some work around that, uh, specifically answering the question for people who are looking for uh, systems integration, how can I buy that from Loop? And, and really in an effort of like, yes, you know, Loop is the practice, Loop Industries is this big, you know, uh, multidisciplinary team of offerings. But if I just want uh, systems integration or for people who are shopping through that, that vein, how do they know that they can buy that from Loop and how can they engage around that surface? Uh, so one of the first ways in which we've dug into this work was around uh, the Ship and Six uh, webpage, which is really just highlighting this part of the work and this business model so that people who want to buy in this vein can do that. And so this has really been part of the work we've been doing all together. And so today we're talking about kind of the next phase of that, which centers around the DISTI. Um, and so in terms of Loop Industries, this is the division of Loop that sells parts and components and is really providing people with, with BNR technology uh, and all of those things. And we understand that that requires a unique strategy that even though those same customers may ultimately require some or all of these other business line services, uh, there's been a long history of them buying a certain way. Uh, and so coming in through the vein of technology and trying to get their hands on, on what they need to satisfy their technology needs, uh, that's something we want to really make clear uh, to our audience, uh, but also we want to have some fun with it. And so in Loop fashion, we start with strategy. How do we position the division of Loop that sells hardware? Uh, and throughout it, we've had a few things driving us and clarifying the mission of what we're doing here. Um, this picture of Carl pointing really captures the feeling we wanted to grab. If we're going to try to con connect with audience around uh, DISTI and around hardware and technology, we, this is the feeling we're, we're looking for. We're not trying to give them a big you know, data sheet full of the specifics. We want to like point at stuff and geek out and, and think it's awesome. Uh, and so we're thinking more strategically about this uh, arm of the business as being matchmaking, right? Uh, as a technology uh, company, we're actually matchmaking the technology with the buyers. And so we become a resource, uh, both the people who make cool automation technology or cool technology that we can apply, uh, but also the customers who don't, maybe are not exposed to those things and they're going to geek out on the potential that is unlocked uh, through that technology. Uh, ultimately, we hope this will expand the network uh, of Loop and get better conversations with people who may not know that they can work with us this way. We want to amplify our ability to curate amazing hardware, both in like just legitimizing working with cool stuff and putting it out there, but also to attract companies who make cool things um, so that they can say, I want to be featured in a Loop unboxing video. I want to be featured in one of your uh, workshop experiments. Um, what, what do we have to do to make that happen? Um, and then ideally, this would also become a, a window into the greater <laughs> reality of loop industries, right? Um, how, do we, how do we go there? How do we connect with those people um, and create a, an obvious way for people to engage with loop? We can just clearly say, yes, we sell hardware. Here's, here's, our, here's our website. Um, to, to fuel this kind of uh, exploration, we always start with value propositioning. Um, what is it that's 
you know, remarkably different or revolutionary about this and, and how we're approaching it. And so we really like this concept of becoming, uh, in a way, treating it like a, match, a matchmaking company, uh, matching highly vetted products with people who want to do really remarkable things with those products. Um, there's a mutual benefit uh, to working with us. Uh, win, 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 win. Uh, sellers get exposure. So top technology companies get eyeballs on their technology. Um, buyers get exposure, exposure to new technology they didn't know existed or didn't understand how to put to work for them. And we get to play. Uh, get to experiment and try new things, and we get exposure to that uh, level of technology that we really love to live in. Um, we also know that we're not your typical, typical applications engineers. We have a new machine concept process. We have dynamic engineers who can help you uh, at every stage of whatever you need. Um, we also know that we can expand your awareness of what's possible, either by exposing customers to technology they don't know about, or even just looking at their project in a new way, uh, helping them understand how Loop might approach it. And uh, ultimately, the, we're technology tastemakers. You know, we're kind of the cool kids of technology, uh, setting the standard for what people should be looking at. Um, and when we compare that to how hardware is often approached and sold in the industry and what makes us different, uh, what we're doing here is we're going to say technology is the star. And we love this really kind of flashy image of these controllers uh, we were doing a photo shoot with because it's a good example of how Technology can be the really uh, an impacting, cool point of conversation. Um, so we want to really create curiosity uh, and, and, and a curiosity and drive to get new experiences with new technology. We've already been doing that through unboxing videos and some of the other things that we've been creating with the media team. Um, and so we want to make sure that when we create these things, we want to bring those pieces of media into the uh, new reality to support our love for this hardware. Um, we know that we have excellent taste. You can tell. Uh, <laughs> we have a unique approach. Uh, our new machine concept approach is a, a really uni unique way of putting a, a, a design together uh, that yields uh, revolutionary results. Um, we're using this gear to solve our own problems. So we're not just like buying someone's gear that we think will work and applying it. This is stuff we've experimented with, we've tested. That's why we believe in it so hard because we know what its potential is. Um, we don't just take orders. We ask, do you, you, know, do you need this? Um, so if the expectation is someone just calling in to uh, access the McMaster car catalog and get their part, we really want to push them towards like, what are you trying to do and how can we help you position technology to get that done in the best way possible. And we have a, a really great skill at Loop and a lot of experience uh, getting this technology into production. And so often many companies maybe see the, the potential in a technology, but they do not know how to put it into production like we do. Um, and so these are all the ways in which we can stand out as different in this environment. When we think about how that approach of matchmaking works out, um, you know, with buyers, we wanna geek out with these buyers. We're not just trying to sell them apart, we're trying to connect on what is so cool about these things and what we can do with them. Um, our buyers are usually peers, you know, they're, they're fun and innovative. They're people who are trying new things and they're attracted to our uh, exploration spirit and what we're doing. Um, they usually want access to our bag of tricks. You know, I wish I could do the cool things that Loop is doing, or I wish I could use that technology in my own environment. Um, and usually those people are, they're thinking as designers uh, and systems engineers. You know, they know, they know what they're after. Um, and then on the seller side, they want their product to be featured among the badass products that get featured at Loop, that it gets a, it's a high watermark for them that they feel like they're being shown among the top technology in the world. Um, because we're revolutionary tastemakers and we're, we're exploring this stuff uh, and putting our hands on it. Um, and in that way, Loop becomes a sales channel for them, like similar to your relationship with BNR, but even in uh, not, you know, hyper-connected ways or contractual ways, when you feature a camera product, people can go buy that camera product. Uh, so it helps that, that company to have exposure and you kind of become a marketing uh, opportunity for these sellers. So that kind of gets into the strategy work that we've done and how we wanted to present and talk about things. And so that was actually kind of the end of, of a sprint and the sprint to follow that we've been working on was naming. What do we call it? Um, we've done some work around how we want to show up. We've done some strategy around how we want to approach people. Uh, but what do we call this? Is it Loop Disty? Is it Disty Subbrand? Is it New Machine Concept? Uh, and so we've done quite a bit of naming with the Loop team already. Um, and so we have you know, some processes that are pretty familiar with everyone. Uh, we had a lot of different columns of information we started to try to pull name ideas from. Uh, but clearly the one that got the most attention and had the most content was in the hardware geek out section. Again, there's Carl pointing, uh, guiding us towards the bright lights of BNR. 
Uh, and so there's lots of great contenders uh, on this list, but uh, the one that really came forward time and time again, and even kind of just crept in as our default was widget. This, this term is really fun and interesting. Uh, there's a direct association with like small mechanical gadgets or devices, uh, especially when they're kind of a placeholder, like there's not a specific name for it. And you just kind of put that widget there. Um, it's usually an application or a component of an interface that enables user to perform a function or access to a service. Uh, and it's relatively simple and easy to use software application or component made from one or more different software platforms. So you often will like put a software widget into your code to solve a common problem. Um, and so there's this direct association with how people access the actual physical things with widgets. But there's also some great brand association. Really think it's a great platform to express our curiosity and passion for new, ge new gear, that kind of gear lust uh, that we get. And that we're always kind of looking at what this widget can do and uh, where can we use this widget? There's this exploration of application and possibility and it connects to our love of new technology. You know, we're, we're curious, you know, can't resist picking that little puzzle up. And so we want to understand new ways we can realize magical potential. Um, we, we end up doing quite a bit of work once we've landed on a name to make sure we can use it in the public space and that we're not going to hit any uh, collisions, et cetera. And so um, we found some available work, web URLs that we could pick from. Uh, and then additionally, I uh, just wanted to share a little bit of some of the other considerations that were on the table because they're fun. Uh, <laughs> for my work was a fun one uh, we considered briefly uh, because that's been a common phrase that's been passed around. Um, but yeah, I can kind of see where our, where our minds was at. And so now that we've got our name of widget and wanting to go forward, we're going to need some design. We're going to need a, a website uh, for this environment to live. Uh, and that really starts with the logo. And so we did some uh, logo exploration. Uh, we wanted the logo to feel like it was a part of the loop universe, that it fits in the brandscape, but it can also stand on its own, have its own unique presence. Um, with this exploration, uh, with previous logo explorations, we brought in like illustration or some component like that. But because technology is the star here, really wanted to kind of have a little more subdued approach. And so we developed this logo widget. Um, it was kind of a happy accident that the brackets got pulled into place, uh, you know, as we were designing this and, and Allie, who just helped design this, was really thinking of it as like how you use it in like a software application or as like the idea of a placeholder. Uh, but then we were reminded that the original ARG logo also had brackets above the top. So it's kind of like full circle, especially since ARG was primarily a DISTI. Uh, and so there's a lot of great, great goodness in here. Um, it looks great. It feels like it's in the right uh, universe with the rest of the site. Um, and so moving from creating the brand elements and the logo project, boy, we've done a lot of stuff on this already. I love giving these presentations because even I am like, oh, okay, there's more. Where we're at right now is we've been doing some work on the website. Uh, and so first, first we developed some strategy around how do we want to do this? So we have our, our concept in place, we really understand how we're going to function. What does that look like in terms of design? Um, started to look around at how we could do this really from the lens that technology is the star. And so... Uh, we're taking our cue from really high-level product companies. Um, this is a good example from Apple. Uh, they, they surprisingly are awesome at highlighting product and technology. Um, we like the clean look of it. We like how there's lots of big open space and opportunities to learn more uh, and dig into deep, uh, deeper things. So like on their homepage, we want to make sure that we're using that ma mainly as a place to land and be directed towards cool stuff. Uh, and then once you dig into a section, you can get deeper detailed, but the details really linked to the through line of why this product is cool or revolutionary. Um, and so the pages are gonna explore the potential of the product and thinking of it as uh, in the old days of sales, you'd maybe have like a, a, a BNR brochure that you hand out at trade shows. Uh, and so in a similar way, we're kind of giving a value proposition and some explanation and details um, as, we, as we tell the story. Uh, we're also going to serve up in this uh, content that we've already created. There's tons of content in video form on the YouTube channel uh, and on the website um, from unboxes and stories that we can position within here to support why we think this technology is cool and how we're experimenting with it uh, out in, the, in our work. Um, we've done a little bit of wireframing. We're still kind of in the process of tightening up the details on this, but uh, this is a good example of how we see the page, uh, the pages coming together. Um, and this is the, the homepage wireframe. Uh, it, for this site, it's not going to be very navigation heavy. We're not really going to have a centralized navigation. Instead, the footer is going to serve as like a growing site index 
uh, that's just going to continue to grow as we add stories to it. Um, we want to use flexible builder modules uh, as we develop this, as opposed to treating it uh, as a kind of a unique site. And so these sections that you're seeing scrolling would be things we can pop new images, new copy, and new headlines in. It gives us like a menu of creative uh, areas that we can pull from to make things. Uh, we've agreed already at launch that we're going to start with the first three stories or first three features being about uh, BNR, ABB, and, and uh, Boston Dynamics uh, with the long-term goal of, of continuing to add stories. And so once we've got this kind of at full launch readiness, it'll have the three top stories followed by four uh, smaller tier stories uh, in, the, in, the, in the page. Uh, and then the other thing we're going to do is this line card approach where we're going to just put cool lo their logos from all the rad companies we work with. We're going to prioritize these for the home page, but people will be able to click in and see a full list of all the different companies that you work with uh, in terms of the technology you're looking into. All right. When people click into a, a, a story like vision systems or track systems here, they'll be taken to a feature page. Um, and right now what we've done is really highlighted ways in which we can visibly show content. So we've got uh, content next to pictures, we've got video uh, panels, we've got bigger photos and some, uh, some things we're still tweaking around creating kind of dense media indexes, um, as well as link out stories to current uh, media projects we've already launched or stories on the website or anything we want to direct people to. And so this is where it really feels like that uh, four panel brochure that tells you all about the product that you're trying to buy or pick up. Um, it's meant to be flexible so that uh, those of the people on the loop team, which we were hoping can provide uh, some technical insight on some of these features as we continue to build them. We have like a menu of widgets we can pull in, <laughs> there we go, uh, into the page to give us a, that menu of, of visible uh, communication and copy. Yeah, we're bringing in video, graphics, photography, and short form copy. Uh, and then we also can have related links. So we can, we can even post the things that are not uh, loop oriented if we think a cool thing is going on um, in another industry or another company. And the homepage is probably gonna look something like this. Um, yeah, that is the world of Widget and the work that we have been doing. Thank you so much, Jeff. I just kind of flew through there, but I'm happy to, we're happy to answer any questions or uh, um, there's a bunch of people who've worked on this with us. If any of you want, had stuff you wanted to share or talk about. Um, I saw a, a smile from you when Jeff revealed the name. I, I saw the brackets. It was. <laughs> <laughs> Allie, when she was pitching the three different concepts that she had done, I, my first question to her was, did you do the brackets on purpose? She, she had not, that was an accident. Happy little I like, accident. Yeah. I was like, it's, I was like, we're, we're done here. Like, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but widget in general is a, it does definitely capture that, that funness to it. I think that was a good choice. I also, what I like about it is like, uh, it's a word that everybody uses, but only like really informally. People, like you would never call your company widget, which is which is what's so good about it. It's just like, oh yeah, every it's like instantaneous and like perfectly the mark meaning, but no one is very unexpected. I think that's one of the things I really like about it. Um, it's like you instantly get it, but it's very surprising. Oh right, of course, widget. But um, yeah, that's that was that was one of my reactions. Does anybody have any languages where widget is a curse word that we should know about or, or any other, like anything we might have overlooked? <laughs> Matt, you were part of some of the earlier conversations and helped us make that, um, not necessarily distinction, but widget is a the distribution arm of, of loop to help clarify what it is. The division. Division. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a division of loop. Because I think my question is, how do I use widget in a sentence? And I think initially it was kind of like, well, it's a brand. I'm like, all right, we'll use it in a sentence. Then we kind of got there, I think. And then that's like, okay, you know, that, that just makes sense. I think the question I asked David, I said, if I was an MBA, how would you describe this? And we like went through it. It's like, oh, it's the division. Oh, okay. You can be in multiple divisions. You, so companies are organized. So yeah, no, I think that's, uh, that crystallizes it for me. The other thing that we talked about in that conversation was kind of the idea of, of these are sort of the external presentations of Loop. Um, within Loop, 
it's still kind of a big amorphous blob for intentional reasons. Um, it's, it's, we're not trying to like make it internal division in terms of walling people off within loop, just to be absolutely clear. But like when people, when you're talking outwardly, just so it's easy, you don't want to sort of drop people in front of loop and they're just like, what is all this stuff? You're like, here's a distribution division. Here's a, here's a company that sells hardware. Um, that's just sort of like, so it's easy to understand and grok. Cause we're, we're usually putting that in front of people or they're kind of finding their way to that. And it's that way it's just like an easier, it's a clearer interface to like, what is all this stuff? It looks just like a magical R and D lab. There is a real value in, in, in kind of holding up a shape that people understand and fits into like a particular bucket in their mind. Like, oh, this is a distributor. You have a line cart, you have, you have brochures, you sell hardware. It's not, um, a lot of our work that we did with Kinesis over the years was like, here's how we apply NMC process to be revolutionary, by the way, with BNR parts. Oh, by the way, we sell BNR parts. Like, so we wanted some place where it was like, this is really front and center. Like we work with the sickest technology and controllers and, and hardware, and you can buy it from us, you know, so that, that was really clear to people. Cause that would, that would be confusing even, and even when we'd explain it, sometimes it'd be really confusing to people. One other question. I had during the presentation, you talked about, you know, you know, we don't want to just be the, the people that just say, oh, you, you need this particular part number, you already have it. And like, here you go, here's the quote. You want to, you know, ask why and what you're doing. Um, I think there is like a certain class of people that just want the quote and want the parts. I know because I've been one. <laughs> How do we accommodate those people? Yes, uh, that's right. And that goes back to some conversations we had within NMC where it's like, just send the quote. Here's my part number. I need the quote. And then there's the people that show up that think they know their part number and they're very certain about it and they're totally wrong. And we know that they're wrong and we need to talk to them. So like, it's like, it still needs to be, still needs to be maybe, you know, where, how, how, how exactly should we do this? Right. I mean, we, today it's like, I need a quote for a spare. Alyssa sends it, it's an end user calls. Like there's a spectrum, there's already a spectrum. We don't wanna be forcing people into a design conversation where that's not appropriate. And sometimes it's like, okay, cool. You asked for this. Tell me why you asked for that. Okay. Like, or like, let's talk. Or where did you know this? You know, like it's, it's like in, that, in those gray areas, I think there's still some, still some work to do, which is also why we did not call it new machine concept because some people don't need a new machine concept, they just need a part and they buy the part from widget. The point of ambiguity too, and I think where I could see this business going, cause it's sort of also changing shape. Like what's the role of a distributor now that the internet exists? Um, now that media, now that the way that we're reaching people all over the world because we make cool videos at loop. So, maybe whether we sell those parts in these zip codes is no longer really the distinction of whether we're the dis or sales channel for them. These are all the brand, these are basically brand partners. You know, there's an, just as much of an argument to say, this is a brand partnership that we have. And maybe they give us money because they made, maybe they give us money to make YouTube videos, or maybe they give us money, to, maybe they give us free gear or something. Like it's like the economic model about it, I, I think is like, I sense that there's like changes underway. Maybe we just, you know, maybe we just get paid to do co-marketing. Like I said, that would be getting the YouTube channel to pay for everything at Loop, which would be awesome. And in, in which case, like the the line card would be like, here's here's our platinum sponsors or whatever. It would it would it would be a different criteria than we sell these parts as an ex exclusive distributor in the following, you know, two and a half states. I love everything you just said. That's great. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. <Josh>. Um, <laughs> Also, just I think in, in terms of our initial choice for when we go to launch, we're going to end up leaning on the, the logos that are going to help the conversation forward. So like our partners that we definitely distribute for, we want to make sure that's clear. And then anyone who we want to be having conversations about uh, publicly, basically. Um, but there's probably going to be a shifting reality on both ends of like what's real inside loop and what's real in terms of how we talk about it in the world. Um, so we'll keep our eye on that. Yeah, and what's widget compatible in the sense of being cool and, you know, in the kind of like automation component influencer way, it's like, eh, whatever, boring linear guides, like not interesting, mm -hmm. you know, that's not, not something we're necessarily going to rep on our line card, but, you know, Photo Neo, like they sent us a sample once, so now they're on there forever because we think it's cool. So I, it'll, there's some, 
definitely fluidity in how that how that will work. Great questions. Uh, what is a line card? A line card. Um, have you ever used a rotary dial phone? Have you ever driven to a customer in a car? <laughs> okay. Um, a line card is a distribution company sort of saying it's literally a piece of paper that has all the logos that that company sell of, of products that they sell. Uh, so like the Home Depot line card, if there was one, because they are, they kind of do this job too, it would have like the following paint brands and which type of lumber and, you know, they sell Makita and DeWalt and, you know, that, that would be like, because they're a retailer, you know, they're not, they're not necessarily like, it's not a direct sale, they're a distribution company. So what, what do they distribute? Usually it's literally a piece of paper that has a bunch of like logos on it. What can you buy from us? Mm -hmm. It's also used in um, machining environments. Often a, a machining shop will have a list of the machines they have in their facility. So, you know, they have a five arm access machine so they can take your work on. Um, or they have like, they have redundancy of machines. So, you know, that if something breaks down, something's going to be okay. It's like a catalog of your brands on a page. I have a question. So the, the Unbox video series uh, definitely has its own momentum and is definitively a loop thing. The activity seems like a widget thing. So is it is that shifting or does it depend or where does that live? I think I think Unbox is kind of a loop industries thing, but I'm sure there'll be there'll be Unbox videos on the brochure. Like the other because the other thing that we didn't talk about, we talked about the headliners, right? Like all of BNR all of ABB, all of Boston Dynamics. And then there, what we're talking about also is BNR, but track systems, or here's a, here's a widget brochure or page that's about how to build a cobot cell that has a gripper and an ABB robot and a table and some sensing and a camera. That could be a brochure of like, here's, you know, here's kind of a pack, here's kind of a package or combo of things would be a, a good example page that we talked about. Or yeah, like with BNR, here's a focus, here's a brochure that's focused on track system. So it's just here's the, you know, here's us unboxing a a 6D shuttle. Here's us, you know, here's some examples of how track systems are used. Like so unbox, I think, I think is kind of not exclusive to to widget. Gotcha. A lot it's of it a, is though, right? It, it brand wise, like purpose wise, you're like, we're excited about this gear. Like that's very widget. It's very much widget aligned. It's crossing the streams. Uh, it's a good opportunity to have um, like within a, a story or a feature about something like being in our track systems, we can use uh, an unbox video in that layout, even embed it in that page so people can see our work with that track system. Um, but then unbox kind of still has its own personality. Like we unboxed the Gofa, you know, we unboxed the collaborative robot. So it would make sense, you know, and then I, an unbox video is sort of loop is excited about it. Here's two or three sentences of what it is and what's cool so that it would fit into, you know, oh, and by the way, here's specifications. Here's like, here's more stuff from ABB. Here's where you can go to their online configurator. Like that could be like a ABB col collaborative robot or even just like a Gofa brochure on, on widget site that has, you know, that, that has an unbox video kind of somewhere in it. Brian, I think your question also inspires perhaps an opportunity for Vanessa oh, okay. and Allison and the media squad to think uh, think about e leveraging Unbox around culture and unboxing things that, I don't know, connect to us culturally, not necessarily from the, the hardware perspective. I was wrong about my two o'clock hard stop. It's actually 1.45, so <laughs> I have to go. Um, thanks to all of you. Keep talking if you like, but uh, thanks for thanks for attending. I'm excited about this. Thanks. Thanks so much, Thank Jeff you. and Alana. Hi. And Kyle. Sorry, didn't forget you. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. See ya.